So the land water heat in different creation they call marine effect. The marine describes the lower temperature range allocation by the ocean, and the continental effect referring land areas with a great temperature range on both daily and yearly base. So let's see two cities, San Francisco in the west side, in the west close to the ocean, and also you have Trondheim in Norway. Look about those differences you have. Well, let's start with San Francisco, where you have not much difference temperature between summer and winter. So let's see San Francisco and Wichita. If you compare latitude, 37.7, 37.38, .7, very close latitude, uh, altitude is not much difference. But where Wichita is located? In the center of the United States. So if you look first for San Francisco, you see the temperature range is not so much. You talk about roughly between 50 to 65, let's say 15 degrees for San Francisco. Uh, look what happened in Wichita. We we'll talk about much warmer in summer and start getting cooler in the winter. That's what happened. So another example you have in Trondheim, Norway. That's the red line. You see, even though we get some te months temperature below the freezing point, but on average, you have the same temperature here. But look at the other one, Verkhodkiansky, Russia. Middle of Siberia, extremely large continent. Even in the summer, the temperature is very close to Norway, but look what happened in the winter. The temperature get negative 50 degrees easily. So the temperature range is more than 100 degrees Fahrenheit between those that city. So that's show extremely continentality effect. So resuming, cities close to the ocean has a more moderate temperature. It's a little cooler in the summer and a little warmer in the winter. So the temperature range is slow. When you talk about cities located in the middle of the continent, could be Wichita, could be close in the Siberia, what you see is a great temperature range. So the difference between summer and winter increased tremendously. Global patterns of air temperature are a reflection of the relative importance of the sun angle and insulation intensity, day length, and location with respect to water bodies. We have found that low latitude locations experience less variation in sun angle and day length and do mid and high latitude locations. Places located near large bodies of water tend to have more moderate temperature than other further inland. So let's look first in July. In July, the 10 degrees isotherm swings to the north as we move from the cold water to the warmer land. The differential heating of land and water results in a small variation in position of the 10 degrees isotherm of water, but much larger variation over land. So if you look at this map here, Global pattern of IR temperature are a reflection of the relative importance of sun angle and the insulation intensity, day length and location with respect to water bodies. We have found that low latitude locations experience less variation in sun angle and day length than do mid and high latitude locations. Places located near large bodies of water tend to have more moderate temperatures than those further inland. So if you look at this average July map, what you're gonna see is how temperature changes. But remember those factors, uh, you have altitude, latitude, uh, cloud cover and land, and uh, land uh, water distribution. But if your planet was just covered by water, those lines they call isotherms because what happened isotherms connect equal temperature iso equal therm temperature if you have only water what you see is the isotherms will be parallel to each other because the only factor will be latitude but since you have a distribution of land and water another things happen for example we will talk about uh, the distribution is special over land. So let's see if more details here. So imagine 
you have a latitudes here. So in, if you, because the distribution of land water and how land respond to heat, at the same latitude, if you have over the ocean, let's say, at this point here, you're gonna have, uh, let me change color, let's put red again. So imagine here, over the ocean, I have 60 degrees, over land at the same point, instead I have 60, I'm gonna have a 70 degrees. Let's imagine 70. So now here is gonna go 60, let's go 50, 40. So now you're gonna do the same thing, 50, 40 and 30. So what happened is, at this point here, if I'm gonna connect the isotherms, remember, equal temperature is gonna be like that. If you try to go over land, I'm exaggerate here, go there, go there. So during the summer, the characteristic you have is the isotherms bend polywards. So that's the main characteristic you have in July. So when you talk about in January, look what happened. You have the arrow here pointed out. So what happened is pretty much the isotherms is going to bend south. So let's see if it, that's true. Let's combine again, go back to black. So now the land is much colder than the ocean. So what tell you? At the same latitude, the temperature over land will be much lower than over the ocean. So let's start here in the middle. Let's say here uh, 30 degrees, I'm exaggerate 30 degrees. But over land, you're gonna see over water, you're gonna be 50. So now you have a 20, you have a 10, here is gonna be 40, it's gonna have a 30. Uh, below you have a 60, 70, here is going to be 40, and 50 here. So what happened right now, if I connect my temperatures, so 40 is going to connect here, because it's 40, 50 is going to connect over there, uh, you have a 30 connecting over here. So what you see in this situation is the temperature what it does, the isotherms are pointing towards the equator, like it bending towards the equator. If you look back at this picture, you see more details that happen. So keep that in mind, because the continentality effect, the temperatures in January will be over land much colder than water. The same in July, we're gonna have temperatures over land much warmer than the ocean. So that's why, remember the Wichita compared to San Francisco? That's a good example.